Morning, welcome to worship at Windsor United Church of Christ. Of course, I'm filming this in Ripon, Wisconsin, uh, due to the coronavirus, and, and I have a lovely staff of beautiful women who are helping me do this, arrange this, so that the sound will be better today and the video will be better. It's Palm Sunday. It's one of the special Sundays in the Christian church here. And on Palm Sunday, we remember that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. I have a donkey uh, behind me. I'm standing at uh, one of my daughters uh, made this in grammar school. But the thing about donkey is it's always a beast of burden, and its head is always down. It's never lifted up. And the beauty of, of the donkey is that, is that this is what Mary rode into Bethlehem on when she was having her baby. And this is the last thing that Jesus rode when he went up into Jerusalem in order to face his death. Palm Sunday is a Sunday of pathos, a Sunday of joy, Sunday of celebration. But we know that tomorrow begins Holy Week. When Jesus went up into Jerusalem, he had to go through the St. Stephen's Gate 2,000 years ago. The Antonian Fortress, the Roman Fortress, was at the top of the hill, and the gate was just below it. So when there was a commotion, people know, they knew that something was happening that, that that was noisy and special. The Romans didn't like noise. It made them nervous. The Jewish temple was also beyond that gate. So in a sense, what Jesus was doing was announcing that he's coming. He's coming on the mighty war steed that all warriors and all kings in the ancient world rode into a city on victorious. His steed was not a mighty war horse. It was just a donkey. We celebrate this because it's a matter of joy and pathos. For us, it's a celebration of somebody who let go of his life. And we think that he let go of his life for us. We choose to, to believe that even in our life and our time. This is what anchors us to whom we are. I'm going to read for you uh, the processional gospel and uh, even though we don't have procession this morning I think that that uh, uh, we're going to pretend as if we did please listen if you have ears to hear lift up your heads and behold Emmanuel God with us behold our God who comes riding on an ass the ruler who dares to be last rather than first. Hear Holy Scripture. If you have ears to hear, please listen. If you have eyes to see, please read where you are. When they had come near Jerusalem and reached Bethphage, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and, and a colt with her, Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road. Others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna, the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, 
asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Here is the reading of Holy Scripture, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God abides forever. Thanks be to God for God's gift to us. Amen. silences, the shouts of the mighty, quiet within us, every voice but your own. Speak to us now through the suffering and the death of Jesus Christ, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may receive grace to show forth Christ's love in lives that are committed to your service. Let us continue our prayer, saying a prayer of confession. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry. They're too real to hide. They're too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed. And grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Here are these words of good news. These words of good news are a response to our prayer of confession. Here are the good news. Who's in a position to condemn you? Only Christ and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. 
and Christ prays for us all. In Jesus Christ, we're forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our second lesson this morning comes to us from Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11. This lesson is called the emptying of Christ. St. Paul said, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself he took the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the reading of Holy Scripture. Again, the grass was as the flower fades, but the word of our God abides forever. Thanks be to God for God's gift to us. Amen. When we were uh, setting up this little set, uh, there are couches behind me, there are... Uh, Two women listening, um, maybe they don't want to listen, but they have to. It's no choice. There's 
My wife's listening in the kitchen, and my dog is laying, well, sleeping on the couch. He doesn't listen often either. But when we set the setup, the beauty of it is that uh, my wife and these lovely daughters who are around me, they set this up, they put a palm tree next to me, they helped me with the donkey, they helped everything, so I'm really comfortable to say something that's uncomfortable to you today. What's uncomfortable about this text is that most of us would like to rely on ourselves for everything. In the midst of the coronavirus, we realize that we have lost control of literally everything. If you still have food on your table, if you still have money, if you still have goods and services, it's a wonderful thing. It's not for the five and a half million people who this week, just this week, lost their jobs and their benefits and who are filing for assistance from our government, emptying himself. Most of us like to look at our portfolios. We like to be powerful. We like to believe that we are in control. That kind of control is nothing but an illusion. And we like to live with our illusions, live in denial. And we forget that everything simply is temporary. When you look at the life and the times of Jesus of Nazareth, look at who he was with and what he did. He had no stock portfolio. He had no money. He had no wealth. He had nothing but himself and the grace that he bore wherever he went. Make it a volitional choice, though, to empty himself of everything. He had time to look in the gutters, to see the blind, to see the poor, see the alcoholic, to see the dispossessed, to see women that people called wanton, to look in reality and see that God wanted to reconcile the world, not to beat the world to death, not to enhance power and enrich the wealthy. What God wanted to do was show love. And when Jesus came forth and he emptied himself of everything that he had, he was even willing to let his own life go. For the likes of you and me, we try and then we fail. We stutter, we stumble, we fall. But yet Palm Sunday, coming around as a ritual year by year, reminds us that we can get up again. We can begin again and we can follow. And we don't have to be exalted. Our names don't have to be in the paper. We don't have to be told how wonderful we are, even though we'd like it. What we can do, though, in essence, is follow the Christ in emptying ourselves, giving ourselves away, being generous with all who come into our spheres of influence, and following him in that way. During Holy Week, we're going to be reading about about suffering, about death, and about loss. But, of course, that's not the end of the story. Because the end of the story is a resurrection story in which life is given back, in which reconciliation, hope, and grace are offered to everybody. To you. To me. I need this for my own grounding and for the whole of my being. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, you've come to us in, in grace on this day. You've shown yourself to be kind and loving in the Christ who, who came for the poor, the weak, the dispossessed, the marginalized, the last, the lost, the least, the loser, the broken. We thank you that he came for us. And then coming for us came with grace to show us a path that we could live, a path of being generous, a path of being helpful, 
a passive being utterly grateful. For us, we have found that our lives are enriched by the presence of your grace. Be with us as we go through this Holy Week and lead us to the new day, which will be heralded next Sunday. On the way, help us to stop and see suffering and see if the point of your suffering had to do with our being reconciled to one another. Not a tautology of rich and powerful and weak and lost, but as sisters and brothers. We're on a path together, a path of loving, of giving, of helping, and creating. In the strong name of Jesus, I offer this prayer. Amen. If we were at church, it would be that time on a service when we would take our morning tithes and offerings. And uh, we don't have that capacity to do today. What we do have the capacity to do is right where we are, decide what we would like to share with others, what we would like to give in our offering. You can do that by sending a check to the church, or you could also uh, give online, as I've been known to do through the years. And I think that, that by that we'll be able to get through this time together. Giving and receiving is, is the essence of who we are, pouring ourselves out for others. Remember the food pantry right here in our church. Remember the fact that we are a giving people. And we are a people who celebrate abundance. We have more than we could ever ask or need. And those of us who don't have that much, we're ready to help and to care. Please. Choose to give today. Let us pray. Gracious one, we thank you for the opportunity to give, for the opportunity to receive, and for the fact that in your presence, love conquers all things. We pray that on this day, you will keep us and you will receive our gifts and our offerings. In Jesus' name, amen.
I've never done Holy Communion like this before, where I'm absent from people I know. I have my wife and two beautiful girls here with me who will celebrate the sacrament with me. Hopefully you have bread, some wine, grape juice, or some form of juice in which you could participate in the reenactment re of the sacrament today. I'm hopeful that you will choose to participate. By way of invitation, I want you to know that many came from north, south, east, and west to sit at table with our Lord. They came hungry, they came poor, they came needy. They came lost, confused. Some of them came estranged. This table is a table of healing, of healing love, of healing grace, and it's a table in which we embody all that Jesus has done for us. We remember that on the night when he was betrayed after supper, he took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. We also remember that on the night when he was betrayed, he, he took the cup and he said, this cup is a new testament of my blood. As often as you drink this, drink this in remembrance of me. And St. Paul said, for as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he returns for us. Let us pray a prayer of consecration. Dear God, consecrate this bread, this wine, our juices. Would you consecrate it in such a way that even though we are not able to touch one another and pass this loaf to one another, and pass this wine to one another, that where we are, when we eat, we drink. We eat and drink your presence and your grace. May it strengthen and may it sustain us in all that we do. Bless all in one this wine and this bread. In the name of Christ, amen. Let us keep the feast. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Old thing. Did she go away? The body of Christ broken for you. Let's eat all of it. Blood of Christ shed for you, drink all of it. Let's pray. Thank you, O oh God, for feeding us at this table with love and with grace. Thank you for Jesus Christ who, who loved us with the love that was willing to die for us. We especially give you thanks for one another. Although our lives are separated by distance, by time, we pray, O oh God, for your healing and your grace. Allow us to know that we are all reconciled in love. Amen. I want to thank you for tuning in today, for joining us in this Palm Sunday celebration. And I trust that this week, although we aren't together, although we can't touch each other, that, that you will feel that you're not alone, you're not forsaken, and you're not abandoned. Know that the God of love does care for you and for me. That even though we're broken, even though we die, even though we feel like we're lost, we're surrounded with love and with hope and with undeserved favor, the favor of grace. We do now receive the blessing. May 
the grace of Jesus Christ, might the love of the Creator God, and might the fellowship of God's Spirit be and abide in you, in me, and in the whole world, and keep us together, world without end. Amen. Go in peace.